Okay, hey guys, this is um, Isaac, this is Skylar. They're uh, two of the preachers at Revival Culture. Uh, they can preach their face off, they know the word of God, and we were just looking at um, a word that many of you may not have heard, and we just looked it up today because I've been seeing a lot of commentary around this word called cessationist. And uh, you looked it up, Isaac. And just, um, oh, let me give you a little history. So he's a millionaire, he's a millionaire. And he used to be a pastor. Uh, he used to teach new members classes at uh, one of the largest churches in America, which is the Potter's House. And he was at the North Campus. And um, so they have experience in ministry, but when they connected with me, they started seeing not just their ministry expand or evolve, but their personal lives took on a different health uh, financially, relationally in their marriages uh, as fathers because they're both fathers and they're married. Um, and uh, they're, they're very successful. They're doing well. They are disciples of Christ. And um, so they interact with me. This is a live feed that was pre-recorded. However, I am in the chat to interact with you in the chat. Um, so please come in back to me. If you have anything, I want to respond to you. This is going to be lengthy, more lengthy than usual because it is alive. And I pray you share it. Go ahead and share it with people. We're looking at this word cessationist. And I want to define it. A lot of the people in the religious world, they may know what this is. And the with a theological background, uh, students of the word, they may know that word. But a lot of people may be watching me from a Forbes interview or the uh, entrepreneur. I'm in a lot of secular columns. Um, who are starting to embrace biblical principles around um, uh, finance, finances and, and uh, biblical prosperity. Believe it or not, I've been in Forbes, I've been in USA Today, entrepreneur.com. The list goes on NASDAQ, and I'm, things are lined up for even more um, uh, major platforms of that nature. So this is the introduction, and we're going to start by defining this word, because I do something called demonstrate, hashtag demonstrate. Yes, sir. That's from, um, what is it? Is it 1 Corinthians 2 or 4? Is 2 Corinthians? I can't think right now. But Paul said, I don't come, my preaching is not with eloquent words, enticing words of man's wisdom, right? But he said, I come in the power and demonstration of the spirit and power. I come in demonstration of the spirit and power. I'm paraphrasing. So I, I took from a scripture called demonstrate. That's when you show evidence that the spirit and the power of God is at work in the ministry beyond what you're saying. So a lot of times I see, uh, I pray for people without touching them. Um, we have teachings. There's a book, there's an ebook called Demonstrate. Because you may see videos of me waving my hands or pointing at people or I may blow. The Bible says in uh, John chapter 20, Jesus breathed on them, they received the Holy Spirit. A lot of people may disagree or agree. I would say study. I spent at least a decade studying this uh, because I wanted to see God move. When I saw the move of the Spirit, I was intrigued and I wanted to see more of it. I didn't look at it and say, oh, I don't believe God does that. I was intrigued because I knew it was something beyond the natural. All right? So you can't say that. I mean, the average person with intuition and just a brain is going to say, oh, it's something, that's not just emotional uh, you may say it's hypnotic, you may say it's demonic, whatever, but you got to first acknowledge it's something beyond the natural happening right there. So when I saw it, I was intrigued, and it took me into a study, and uh, I post videos of things in the move of the Spirit that sadly used to be celebrated. But now that this cessationist group, which is a word for those of you who may know me from financial columns and other backgrounds other than church, we're going to define this. Isaac is going to define this and give some commentary behind it. Uh, in just a minute here, Skylar can jump in whenever he wants to um, when Isaac is explaining. Um, they may look at these things and has these, as this group has grown, they attack these things. Now, there is some very wacky and weird stuff I've seen. And one of my reels on Instagram, I explained the difference between weird and strange because the Bible says in Luke chapter 5 that they saw strange things when they went to Jesus. Yes, Weird and strange is two different things. And neither one of them are unexplainable. One can be explained by foolery and one can be explained by biblical uh, truths. Wow. 
But there's a reason behind it. Nothing just happens. Yes, sir. Nothing just happens. Everything has a causal factor behind it. So, uh, yeah, there's something behind it. And I think if we get beyond that fact, that biblical truths, that there's an ebook. Again, it's called Demonstrate. Because when people see me moving in the spirit in ways that used to be celebrated, they may categorize it with the wacky stuff. Amen? And that's okay. Because when I get done, I've seen people prosper. I've seen people healed. I've seen people, you know, I've seen the fruit of the move of the Spirit. Okay? So I'm kind of addressing this because I took these videos off the market for a long time. I, I saw the hunger decreasing for it. And I took it off. And now that it's back in there, I had Chris Brown, and he mocked the move of the Spirit. And I put out a public prophecy about it, and it came to pass. And, uh, I mean, all kind of stuff happened. Um, yeah. And then, you know, I put out a new video recently, and I'm sure it's ruffling some feathers, and I'm sure people who don't believe God moves like this anymore they think it's just a part of the show or games. So we're going to break this down with scripture. Does God still move? Does God still move in the supernatural? So we're going to explain this word because you're going to hear me refer to it a lot and talk to me. Let me know where you're coming from. Uh, share this. Share it. Share it. Share it. Okay, so Isaac, yes, what is a cessationist? So a sensationist is someone who believes that all the revelatory and miraculous gifts of the Spirit ceased with the apostles and the completion of scriptures. So they don't believe that there's any more miracles, any more miraculous gifts, any more of the charisma or doma gifts after uh, the apostles and revelations was written, sir. Okay. Okay. Now, we're going to hear a lot of commentary behind that. You want to add to this? Okay, so you're going to hear a lot of commentary behind this in a minute. We're going to go into the recording. But just the way you said it and you defined it, one scripture refutes that. He said, if you believe on me, the works I do, you should do also in even greater works. That's good. So if greater works cease, guess what else ceased? Belief. Wow. If the works of God in the miraculous have ceased, guess what else has ended? Faith. One scripture refutes that definition. Yes, sir. But I, I don't want to land on you're wrong, we're right. That's not the spirit of this video. Because when I get into it, you're going to hear my heart, and I believe the heartbeat of heaven. Jesus said you do error because you don't know the scriptures and the power of God. It takes both. I believe that's something that spirit-filled people can learn from cessationists. But I also believe that's something that cessationists can learn from spirit-filled believers. So um, charismatic, Pentecostal, apostolic, whatever you want to call it, Trinitarian, I don't know. If you still believe the miraculous and the gifts of the Spirit are at work today, or you don't believe that stuff is at work today, I believe both groups can learn from each other. And that's my posture. That's my heart posture. And I follow this guy on Instagram. It's called The Holy Note. And uh, because I felt it, I, I found it very intriguing his ability to take scripture and just kind of like have his explanation around what he thinks, you know, a lot of stuff he has posted, he has rightfully described it as wacky, weird, and it shouldn't be happening. 99.9% of the stuff I've seen on this page. You follow him? Yes, sir. Oh, you started following, you saw me follow him? I just, I just saw a post come up, sir, and I was, I was intrigued as well. Sir. You was intrigued? Yes, sir. Okay. So I, I, I like the guy. He may not believe in what I do, but I, I like the guy. I think he's a student of the word, but I think it's a lot he can learn in the spirit, and I think God's going to use him. And that's a prophecy I have for him, you know, later on in the scripture. And, um, yeah, it's one thing to prophesy and wait for it to come to pass. It's another thing when God speaks, and you know that thing is going to happen. So... Yeah, I believe this man, this man is going to have an encounter with God because he's a student of the word. And uh, it reminds me like a Paul, 
Paul the Apostle. Mm. And uh, I think God's going to use him. However, um, I don't even know his name, but he, he owns the Holy Note page or whatever. And um, amen. Let's get into it. You ready? Tune in. This is an interesting conversation. Does God still move in the supernatural? Mm. We're going to answer that. We're going to answer that. All right. I want to connect with some of you. Make sure you um, watch and share. And uh, here's the video. But it calls people that, that don't believe. Cessationists. Cessationists. Huh? It's not, it's cessationist. Ces, cessationalist. Is it cessational or cessation? <laughs> it's a C. C E S S. Cessationism. But, but that's the thing, like an ism. But what, what are the people called? A cessa cessationist. Okay. Hmm. Yeah. I'm thinking about a response. See, I I haven't posted demonstrate because I know the misunderstanding around it right now, especially with cessationists. Right now, you know, people are just like. They at each other's throats, like they got this movie out, Cessationist. John MacArthur, John MacArthur. I actually like him when it comes to biblical views on a lot of things, but he doesn't believe that a lot of the things that started with the apostles still happen. And the thing is, why did it end so fast? Nothing God did in the history of God started and ended that fast. Even when Jesus was walking the earth, he said, you listen to Moses and you listen to me. Moses lasted 2,000 years. So the problem I have with cessation is, is how did the old covenant last longer than the new? It doesn't make sense. It's something that started with the apostles would not end with them because even the heart of God with Moses, he said, there's coming another like after you. Moses said, there's coming one like after me. And he was talking about Jesus. And when Jesus uh, mentioned uh, how he was prophesied by Moses, he said, Moses was referring to me. That God would raise up another deliverer because they didn't receive Moses. And um, even his heritage went all the way to Jesus. That Jesus is the prophet that God said, I'm going to raise up like Moses. Now we know he's the son of God. Just in case cessation isn't listening to me, they try to find something like, see, he said he's only a prophet. He's the son of God, he's Lord. Jesus is Lord. You get, he's boss. He's ruler. He's creator. Amen. So, um, uh, how does M Moses' spiritual legacy last longer than the apostles and Jesus? That's error. That's error. And here it is Jesus, when he rebuked. The um, Pharisees in the book of John, he said, you error because you don't know the scriptures and the power. So this is prior to the outpouring of the spirit wow. on the day of Pentecost. This is before the cross. This is prior to the ability of heaven that a man could be born again. You get what I'm saying? Yes, sir. And he's saying... You need the scriptures and the power in order to understand me. So if you needed that while they were still in the old covenant, how can you do without that now? 
when Paul came back and said the, the, it's the letter that kills, but it's the spirit that gives life. And he said that there was a veil. This is all in um, 1 Corinthians chapter 3. There was a veil over the hearts of everyone that read Moses. When Moses veiled his face because the glory was leaving, and um, speaking of the glory that was leaving, the Bible says, if the old ministration had that much glory, then the how much more glory? This is, this is like, this is, 1 Corinthians 3 is anti-cessationist. <laughs> it's saying the new covenant has more glory than Moses had. And it, the glory Moses had caused his face to shine. You get what I'm saying? Then Hebrews 11 says, all these people they were na- that they named in this hall of faith that we call Abram and uh, Daniel and uh, Samson. And it says time will fail to talk of Samson and Barak and that all. You know, all the people that they did mention, the people that they did mention, how Sarah, Sarah her womb received strength to conceive. It's like they believed that the old covenant had more power than the new. That's the fallacy of cessation. It's saying that it ended. Well, it didn't start with the apostles. So it couldn't end with them. And then it says in Hebrews 11, I never finished what I was saying. It says, um, all of those were our examples, but God had, did not make them perfect because he has something better for us. So when they say that their main scriptures, when the perfect comes, we're going to do away with all this stuff. Okay. So their definition of perfect is now the gifts of the spirit is not needed. But Hebrews 11 definition of perfect is something better wow. on better promises. Perfect when it says, but when the perfect comes, you know, the prophecies and all that will cease. It's because something better. There's not no prophecy. It's better prophecy. <laughs> How do you know? Look at the example of Jesus. And plus, Paul is talking. When it says, but when the perfect comes. See, Paul wasn't even considered scripture until Peter said in Peter that the epistles were scripture. Wow. The scripture that Jesus said was scripture. Now, I'm not saying the New Testament is invalid because the Bible, you know, all scriptures, you know, is given and breathed and, you know, you know, you know, the scripture. So uh, Jesus said the scripture. When he referred to the scriptures, he was talking about the law and the prophets. Then Peter said, well, it was the law of the prophets and what the apostles said. He had so much Holy Ghost, he said, this is scripture too. (laughs) However, it's Paul saying, not Jesus. Paul said when the perfect and we don't know the time. Find the scripture. It talks about the perfect in 1 Corinthians 13. I want to read it. Because I'm probably, you know, because cessation is they get, all of a sudden they dumb in the brain when you quote the scriptures. They want you to jump on their slow bus. And, uh, you know, you should know these scriptures because these are scriptures you preach. You get what I'm saying? Like you, like you got amnesia. Well, he didn't read it. You know it. You preach it. You, you use the scripture to preach against the move of the spirit. You know the scripture. I ain't going to even read it. Matter of fact, forget it. You know the scripture. All right. <laughs> so Paul's talking there. And we assume he means that when the perfect come, the gifts are done away. That's not what he's saying. It's not what he's saying, because Jesus said, if you believe on me, John 14 and 12, the works I do, you will do it also in even greater works than these. Who's who's greater? So obviously your definition of Paul's perfect is off because it doesn't match with Jesus definition of greater works. And it doesn't match with Hebrews 11. Now, we don't know the writer of Hebrews. People suggest it's Paul's. However, if it was him then he's contradicting himself. Because if, if 1 Corinthians, Paul says, perfect means that gifts are done away, then why would he say, or whoever say, 
in Hebrews 11 that perfect means we have better promises. What do you mean by better? What makes prophecy better? An example. John chapter 1, verse 15, 51. Jesus said, if this impresses you, Nathaniel, because he had a word of knowledge. He said, oh, I saw you when you were, uh, before they called you when you were under the juniper tree. And he knew where he was. He knew what his name was. He knew what location he was in before he got there. And he knew the nature of his character. And it shocked Nathaniel. And then Jesus said, if this shocked you, you're going to see greater things than this. You're going to see that the heavens open and the angels of God are sending and descending upon the... That's the picture of perfect. That's the picture of better. That's a picture, a description of what Hebrews means when it says we have better promises. We have a better promise of the faith that wrought the supernatural. We have better promises. Let's be in context. They only want to be in context when it's something that's uh, discrediting. It says the same spirit of him, Romans chapter 8, verse 11, that raised Jesus from the dead. If the same spirit of him that raised Jesus from the dead dwells in us, he will quicken our body. He said it's going to bring your body. So hold on. If perfect means you are living in an age where the supernatural stopped, how do you believe in the rapture? Because if you die and the supernatural has stopped, that means your body ain't getting up. And Paul said, I'll show you a mystery. We shall not all sleep. And those who are asleep in Christ are going to get up. This happened before the Holy Ghost. Matthew chapter 27, when Jesus died, it says the graves of the saints were open. The spirit was not even poured out yet, but the graves of the saints were open. And there was a mass resurrection. Do you read your Bible? We skip the scripture if you want to script. Now, no one talks about, the uh, matter of fact, it didn't just say that the saints were raised from the dead. It says they went and visited Yes, sir. Oh, they knocked on the doors of the people who was living. Could you imagine Noah saying, read your Bible. I'm going to read this one because they don't preach this. Amen. I'm going to read this for all the cessationists because all these people. Now, I'm going to get to a point in a minute. I think there's a common ground for cessationists and charismatic. I don't even, I, I don't, you know, charismatic is, I don't, I don't even, uh, I don't even, I don't even, uh, uh, relate to that. Where we get that word from? We get it from, you know, charismata. We get it from the gifts, charis, grace, charisma, grace gifts. It's 1 Corinthians 13. But then you have other gifts in Ephesians chapter 4. Those are, uh, it's not dogma. What is it? Doma. That's right. The Greek word is different. It's not charis. So if gifts are diverse, why reduce the gifted to charisma? Their doma gifts and their charis gifts. Then their 1 Corinthians 12 gifts. Those are different than 1 Corinthians. The 1 Corinthians 12. There's Romans 12 gifts and there's 1 Corinthians 12 gifts and there's Ephesians 4 gifts. You got three types of gifts and categories. One, the first Corinthians 12, the gifts come from the Spirit. Yes, sir. Ephesians 4, the gifts came when Jesus ascended. Yes, sir. Romans 12, the gifts are dealt to every man. That's when you're born. This is our people who are called to be prophets. Born to be prophets become psychics. Because prophecy is one of the gifts that's in the category of gifts that's dealt to every man. Some people are born to serve. They're born. Uh, they're born with... Uh, 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 what do you call it? They're born with hospitality gifts, concierge. They're born with prophetic intuition. They're born with, this is what dealt to every man. He dealt to every man a measure of faith. Who? God. Not the spirit. The spirit dealt to every man severally as he wills. That's 1 Corinthians 12. Jesus gave gifts to man. They're, they're, you can be gifted from birth. You can be gifted. 
gifted by infilling of the spirit. You can be gifted by calling of, 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 of Jesus in the ministry. He's over the fivefold gifts. So he don't care if you believe it's over or not. It ain't up to Paul. It was up to Jesus. <laughs> you get what I'm saying? Let's read that. I want to read this because we don't talk about this. You got to answer this question. You got to answer this question. Matthew 27. Verse 52. I'm speaking in tongues without interpretation. Why? Because he that speaketh in the unknown tongue edify himself, 1 Corinthians 14. He that speaketh to the church in tongues, pray that he need to pray that he interpret, let another interpret. One speaks to God, one speaks to the church. So hold on now. I thought you were a cessationist. So why does it matter if you shouldn't speak in tongues without an interpretation if you don't believe tongues still exist? Come on, come on. So why are you arguing for no reason? <laughs> then it doesn't matter if I speak in tongues if you don't believe in them. <laughs> Here it is, a cessationist will sit there and say, see, he's not supposed to speak in tongues without interpretation. I thought you didn't believe in tongues. <laughs> So you do believe in it. You know why? Because your mind cannot argue with the depths of God's word. You know, the word debar is the Hebrew word for word. All right? It means matter. All right? It doesn't just mean matter. All right? It's, it's different from logos. That's in the Greek. But it means when the word is spoken... It's forever speaking. That's why Hebrews is forever speaking. That's why Hebrews 11 and 3 says he upholds all things by the word of his power. Wow. When he said, let there be light. That word is still letting light. <laughs> and the word is still talking. The word would have to silence itself in order for light to dissipate. And let's talk about who talked about the perfect thing. An apostle. Most people who are afraid of the move of the spirit and preach against it, they're not deep enough to counter it. They don't have the depths of God in them enough to say what is and what's not. An apostle said, this era is going to end. And that wasn't the focus of his text. The focus of his text was not about when the gifts are going to end. You can't start a chapter in the, you can't start a book in the middle of the chapter. Mr. Context. You got to start at the first book in the history of why it was written. The, the desire of Paul, of God through Paul, when he was writing in 1 Corinthians chapter um, 1, is plain and simple. I think it's around verse 7 or verse 10. He says, I don't want you to come behind or be without any gift. Wow. So why would he jump to verse 13 and say, are they about the end? No, he just said the purpose of writing the book. He said, I don't want you to come behind in the gift. Oh, God help us. And what is the perfect thing that's in 1 Corinthians 13? Love. Why is that important? Because faith worketh by love. That word works is the word dunamis. You shall receive power, dunamis, after the Holy Ghost comes on you. He said faith makes love, no, no, no. Love makes faith turn into power. Wow. So the perfect thing he talked about was, a perf was Hebrews 11, was a better promise of moving in the supernatural. No. Wow. 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 
That's deep, isn't it? Now let's read this. Matthew 27, verse 52. No, I'm going to talk about it. Verse 50. And when Jesus had cried again with a loud voice, he yielded up the ghost. This is him dying on the cross for our sins. And behold, the veil of the temple was rent. Let me tell you what. Let me tell you what. I'm going to tell you something. Because I know if people are watching this and I'm talking to, they they don't like speaking in tongues like that. You get it? So it, they, they're cringing, but I want to I wanna use this moment to expose something. They're cringing right now, but God is not. I have seen the dead raised. We have nine testimonies of the dead coming back to life. No, I don't care if you believe it or not. Some of y'all don't even want to believe it. That's your choice. You asked the nurses that was in the room with some of these people. And it shook them and they almost jumped out of their skin. However, I've seen God move by his spirit. Now, guess what? Not once in my spiritual walk. Now, if you've seeing more people raised from the dead. If you've seen, we've seen blinded eyes open. You can go right there on my Instagram page. You see blinded eyes open right there on the spot. You see deaf ears open right there on the spot. You see people get out of wheelchairs right there on the spot. Oh God, this is deep, isn't it? And all my, and if you've seen greater miracles than that, then you teach me something about the spirit. Until then, why are you so arrogant? Amen. However, in everything I've seen God move, in all the ways I've seen God move. And speaking of God moving, you can scroll my Instagram page right now and you'll see global national prophet. God told me, Mr. I don't believe God speaks to people anymore. God told me when to announce that the pandemic lockdowns were ending. It's on my page. This is what people don't know about. I've been to the White House, and I have the receipts and the screenshots of the emails when God told me to email the liaison, the reasons why President Trump wouldn't make the the second term. I told them why he would not make the second term. Now, I'm the same guy that God told me to openly prophesy that his impeachment would break. That's on my page, too. (laughs) Same guy is on my page that God told me a, 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 a weather pattern was coming over the whole east side of the United States. And it was at the end of May. And we had the largest blizzard on the whole east coast during the pandemic in 2020. You scroll the page. And in all my history, an experience of moving with God. Let me draw another scripture that why the Holy Ghost is uh, parallel in this thing. Let's cross-reference this. For all the people that believe that some things that God doesn't do anymore. Right? We believe in Elijah, right? But it was Paul the Apostle that said Elijah was a man like us, but he prayed. He said the fervent effect, James 5 and 16, the fervent effectual prayer, the righteous man availed much. He was saying what God did with Elijah, he will do with you. It is not with the apostles. This was hundreds of years at the apostles. And the apostle wasn't teaching other apostles. He was teaching believers. How in the world do we have Catholics that believe more in the move of the spirit, that people who died and lived in history, they have books on them and they call them saints, St. Patrick and St. This and St. That because they walked and documented miracles because they believe that the only thing that separated Elijah from us is their prayer life, not perfection, 
Not the end of prophecy, but prayer. That's what separates it. That's the beginning of cessation is the end of prayer. Now some scripture we took out of context. You stop praying, you stop seeing what Elijah saw. You want to see what the old people saw? That the devil wants to tell you doesn't exist anymore? Then pray. Because all those people that God used, they were men. I'm a man like Elijah, but I've seen the dead raised. I saw it. I saw the blue and the black in, in his body. I saw the life of God come back, took a breath, and his eyes came back. That's amazing. <laughs> Freaked me out. All I said was, G -G -G. by the time I finished Jesus, life was back in his body. That's deep, isn't it? That's powerful. Now, what was I saying before that? No, no, it was something before that, too. Oh, no, no. Okay, let's just go back. And Jesus cried with a loud voice. He lit up the ghost. Oh, that's, thank you, Holy Ghost. And all my experience of moving in the spirit. See, see, 1 Corinthians 12. It says, no one can call Jesus Lord. Boss. In other words, no one can come under him except by the spirit. You know what being spiritual about? Is about is about surrendering. Is about making him Lord. And you're not spiritual until you do that. That's the beginning of the gifts of the Spirit. So to say that the gifts of the Spirit have ended, you're saying that Lordship has ended. Because wherever Jesus is Lord, that's only made possible by the Holy Ghost, which is the Spirit. That divides the gifts. That's 1 Corinthians. That's the first three verses of 1 Corinthians 12. They don't teach you that, don't they? Do that. No, they don't want you to know it. That's when you're in evil intent. It's not ignorance. That's to willfully ignore the things of the Spirit for your own personal religious agenda. That's evil. Where did they get the Pharisees? Nowhere. It says they were so grieved. And that's what I'm about to move to. By the move of the spirit, they gnashed their teeth. They were vexed as if it was hell on earth. What do you gnash teeth? In hell? It takes a vexed soul. And most of these people that don't believe God does it anymore, it's because they were let down by what they wanted God to do, and it didn't happen. So they use the Bible to say what God doesn't do. It could be a death in the family, a loss of a loved one. It could be, and then they, they shut it out. They're so, and that's, it's, my God, you mourn with them who mourn. These are bitter souls. These are people who are gnashing at their teeth. It vexes them so much to see the move of the Spirit. That they're on a mission to say what God cannot do. God has never called a man to preach what he cannot do. Oh, we can end it right there. That's it. He's only anointed preaching people to preach the gospel, which is in translated good news. God anoints people to say all things are possible. God anoints people to say, call those things to be not as though they were. I know they think that's one of those scriptures we name it and claim it and blabbing and grabbing. No, no, we don't believe in that. We believe in prayer. You can quote all you want. But I've seen the supernatural in prayer. Now, so here it is. The religious community is vexed by the move of God because of what they, now, because of what they feel like they haven't seen in the spirit. 
That's a test that has to be passed. The Pharisees were envious. Now those people do some dumb stuff. People do some dumb stuff and call it spiritual. Very dumb. A lot of the way we do deliverance is dumb. A lot of, I know some stuff that you see in my ministry, it, it can borderline look like some of the dumb stuff. It, 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 it's just out there. And I'm really pushing the limits. I'm pushing the limits with it. Purposely. Because I'm, I'm going to be the person. You can sacrifice me. You can crucify me. You can stone me. I'm going to be the person that says, God can do this. Now, if you ain't got enough discernment to, to, to distinguish between the back head bouncing <laughs> and making people fall out, pushing people in the floor, uh-huh. barking like dogs, and all this stuff, they ain't got nothing to do with me. We act like people don't have a heart that is exposed to the will of the Spirit. It's not my job to make sure someone doesn't misunderstand how God No, It's their job. You're trying to manipulate people into a faith that you've hijacked and limited to what you think in your head. Okay, so they're vexed, very vexed people. Now, in all my years of moving in the spirit, it's been 20 now. I bound my body five times. It's in the New Testament. Do you read your Bible? Second Corinthians chapter 12. I've seen Jesus in a vision just like Paul three times. And I've had many encounters where his presence is personified. I didn't see him, but he was there like a person in a room. The second person of the Godhead. Many of those. Mm. That took me to other visions. I didn't see him, but he showed me something else about the world. Three where I saw him. I've had... Extensive experience, and, I'm, and I say that humbly, all right? However, in all my years of living and walking in the Spirit, I've never been grieved by a person who spoke in tongues, even if they didn't have an interpretation. I've never felt the Holy Ghost offended. Now, you, it takes someone who got history with, with God like that for that statement to be acceptable. Well, he just going off what he feel. Take it or leave it. However, I've never seen God grieved. I've never felt him. And I have to, I've, I've seen death stop and I've seen death rebuked. I've seen people avoid danger by what I sense and when the Holy Ghost says, back up off that. Mm. And when he says, move, move into that, it has caused life or death situations. I've never once, never once felt the Holy Ghost quenched because someone mishandled how they were attempting to connect and move in the Spirit. That's the thing. How are you the gatekeeper of how someone else should move in the Spirit and you don't even attempt to? At least they have a heart. I've only seen God pleased at people who at least make an attempt. We do some dumb stuff sometimes. But the heart is, I want to know the life of the Spirit. I'm going to die with the letter. I want to live in the life of the Spirit. That's the heart. And it takes a wicked man to kill that hope in somebody. That they can walk with God like Enoch. That they can pray to God like Elijah and get answers. Takes a wicked man. Takes a wicked, envious, jealous, religious man. Takes a very cold heart to try to kill it in somebody. I've never once tried to kill it in people. I have honed it. You give me hunger, I'll give you a warrior. I've never tried to kill someone's pursuit in the spirit. Have you ever seen me do that? It is demonic. It's the work of the devil. It's the work of the devil. And um, let's read the scripture because I never finished reading it. So 
I did all that to explain why I stopped and prayed in tongues while I was reading the Bible. <laughs> it says, when Jesus had cried again with a loud voice, he yielded up the ghost. He's down across for our sins again. And behold, the veil of the temple was rent in two from top to the bottom. And the earth did quake and the rocks rent and, and the graves were open. And many of the bodies of the saints which rose, I mean, which slept arose. You see that? It didn't say their spirits went to heaven. The Bible is very clear. This is at the death of Jesus. This is not even the resurrection. You see that? Dead bodies. Look at this. Let's read what it says. Let's read what it says. Oh, that by have you know. And many bodies, verse 52. Not just a few, not just a couple of them. Of the saints which slept arose, and they came out of the graves. Here it is now, and they come out after his resurrection. Hold on now. Mm. This is some crazy stuff. Are you seeing this? This is two different occurrences. Their bodies rose at his death. But they didn't mobilize until his resurrection. You would have thought you was in zombie land. <laughs> what kind of holy zombie is going on right here? See, this is what God, he would choose the foolish things to confound the wise. I'm not saying zombies. If you go believe in zombies, see, I can't babysit your imagination because you sit around there and play too many video games. You sit up there thinking, really, I, I'm preaching zombies. You got more imagination to think evil. That's what they call them, a wicked imagination. Their, their imaginations were darkened. You got more imagination for evil than you have imagination for faith. The Bible talks about you out there. And they came out of the graves after his resurrection, and they went into the holy city and appeared to many. Did they just go to heaven with Jesus? Did they have to die again? We don't even know. When did they die again? Because they, they came back up. Who was it? We know the bones of Joseph were there. Ooh. Because... <sighs> wow. This is the kind of supernatural stuff that was happening before Pentecost. And do the not have the worship. This is what we don't really get. Cessationists feel like there are some things that only the apostles did that stopped when they died. However, the Bible never says that only the apostles did the works. He said, you shall receive power. Who was he talking to? 1 Corinthians 15 says he was talking to 500 people. So, did it stop when the 12 apostles died? That's what you said, right? Right? Okay. So that means everyone that received power, once the last apostle died, they just stopped working in power. Because who said what apostle died before what saint? See, you don't want to math. Your math ain't mathing. You, you don't even want to math right now. You don't even want to calculate this. They don't even want to think about it. 
So you you just what about what what about the people that were of God? What about the people that lived after the apostles who were killed early? It's bad when we got a group of church people that believe something has ceased to exist that even modern history books record was still active. You can read about saints anywhere in any nation. Because they were still doing the works of Jesus Christ, which is what Jesus promised. I don't care what you say, Paul, what you interpreted, Paul said. History books record saints and believers in Jesus Christ working the wonders of God. It's like a person who says, I don't believe God does it anymore, despite history. History from the Dark Ages, history from the last hundred years since the Azusa. We got history. Smith Wigglesworth had news articles. What you go? So Smith Wigglesworth was fake, and the newspaper recorded over 40 people raised from the dead. That's fake. If he he got to be real fake, he got to be Illuminati or something. If they just and they working with him like that. You never heard of Catherine Kuhlman, John G. Lake, Maria Wilberth Eder, A.A. Allen, Jack Cole, C.H. Mason, William Seymour. You never heard of these people? This is within the last hundred years. You never heard of these people? It's a demonic attack on the move of the spirit. And it will be broken. Watch. I just like screaming. <laughs> it was powerful, though. Watch it happen. God's going to raise up some of the cessationists. He's going to apprehend. He says, Saul, Saul, why are you persecuting me? He's going to apprehend him. And I believe that God is doing the holy note. It's going to be snatched up. The holy Ghost is going to jack him up and bring him into an encounter. That man knows the Bible, and he's going to do miracles. He's going to walk in the infilling of the spirit. He's going to reform an entire sector of cessationists. I'm telling you what I see. I follow the guy. By the time this video come out, he probably do an evil video about me saying my, what I'm doing is fake. I don't care. I'm not in my feelings. I don't care if you think it's fake. He said, what if man don't believe? Let me every man be a liar. I'm not trying to impress you. That's not even my audience. I care less. <laughs> but I know what I see. Oh, that body on the hood on us. People who are cessationists like that and say what God is not doing, despite like factual history books, news articles, they're like people who don't believe in the Holocaust. And like you got history sitting right in front of you, and you're talking about what God stopped doing. I can see if you said, okay, y'all, it stopped with Lester Summerall. <laughs> you cannot deny the government was calling that man in. The government called that man in to cast the devil out of a lady that was clearly possessed. Now, this is going to shake y'all up. They have a museum because this man, by faith, when he cast the devil out, he reached in as a, like a gesture. That's real deep spiritual principle. I wouldn't even try it. You get what I'm saying? He acted out, snatching the devil out of this woman. And when the devil came out, he had a vision of the devil run, and he had caught it by his hair. And when he came out of the vision, he had the hair of this demon still in his hand. There's a museum overseas that still has the hair of this demon that came out of this woman. And she was back in her right mind. That's Lester Summerall. 
Smith Wigglesworth raised 40 people from the dead, documented. One of them, for sure, was out of a coffin, embalmed. I think his wife died once or twice, and he even raised her back from the dead. And she told him, don't raise me up again. You can't deny. This stuff happened in the last hundred years, and you're trying to argue that something stopped 2,000 years ago. Are you crazy? You don't want to know history. Jesus said, wherever you don't know the scripture and the power, there's error. If you, all, if, you, if, you embra- if you say you embrace the scripture, but you don't embrace the power of the spirit, you are going to have a demon of error. If you say you embrace the power of the spirit, but you do not embrace the power of the scripture, you are going to contract a demon of error. This is why, getting back to what I was saying at first, it seemed like these people are at each other's throats, like charismatics and um, cessationists and all that. I don't, I don't, you know, I followed the guy on Instagram, Holy Nope. You know why? Because I like his commentary on certain stuff. And I think if it's real, who can threaten it? Amen. Could you imagine somebody coming to you and saying, you ain't real? I think you're crazy. Is this a joke? <laughs> you can't tell no one that's been out of their body five times, seen Jesus three times, had many encounters with angels, and seen the dead raised nine times, and seen every sickness. Seen, I've seen autism heal. I've seen the blind heal, the deaf heal. You know what people say? Well, show me the receipts. Look on my, look on my page. And if it's fake, why you want the receipts? You're intrigued. That's what a sign is for. It's to point you in a direction. You're like a stubborn man that's using an old Google map instead of GPS and won't even listen to your wife show you the direction to get there. That's a cessationist preacher. I'm not going to, you know, I'm just using that title now. Of course, I don't know the caliber of every cessationist. Like I said, I tend to enjoy a lot of the uh, uh, material by MacArthur. And this new God, I'm, I don't even know his name. I just know he has the Holy Note page. He doesn't believe in anything I'm doing. However, I think if we get out of our feelings about it, then we can get that balance of Scripture and power. Because Jesus said, without both of them, you're in error. I don't care how smart you think you are. I don't care how spiritual I think I am. I can look at Holy Nope, I can look at MacArthur, and I can say, oh, this is not being um, understood the right way. At least be sharpened. You're going to have to block me because I'm going to learn from all your posts. (laughs) What am I going to learn? A different approach for people who are students of the word but but never students of the spirit? I'm going to become a weapon studying you. I'm going to bind the devil learning your ways. <laughs> Talk about me. Because we're both lacking in something until we come together. Talk. I'm sure I messed up. The problem is you not you won't admit when you mess up. That's pride. That's pride. Because I'm saying, I feel like God said to me, you need to study this approach. You need to know where they're coming. You need to know where you're tripping up in Scripture. Not to try to even um, make it right. You get what I'm saying? They know some stuff that people who have t- taken a deep dive in spirituality have overlooked. We have taken Scripture and applied it to stuff that it did not apply to. And we need that biblical context in areas. The good thing about my upbringing is uh, my pastor was known as a master teacher. And uh, he did deep studies. He taught us how to study the word. Now, y'all may not like this, but a lot of spiritual truths are seen within truths. So I know the history. I know original languages. I know this kind of stuff. I've studied this stuff for years. I was shocked. People, sometimes the definitions I can recall, the Hebrew and Greek just off. I went to Bible school. 
and studied the word. And guess what? Our Sunday school was a accredited theological education. I can take the stuff I learned growing up in church and I can get a degree in theology just by applying. That's how serious my pastor was in teaching the word of God. He was known as a master teacher. We had so many Baptist pastors. I, to this day, full gospel Baptist wouldn't exist probably in the city of Memphis. We had, so, we had, a, Baptist, we had a revival of Baptist preachers get filled with the Holy Ghost and some of the largest... Some of the largest spirit field Baptist churches in Memphis, Tennessee, were born in that revival. Prophet Kevin Leo, he came to our church, and he's on my YouTube channel. He came and led that revival with my pastor. They introduced the fivefold ministry. My pastor participated in, some, in the ordination of the city's first apostles. He's one of the first people after uh, Bishop Patterson. Bishop Patterson called himself an apostle first. So he's one of the first people after Bishop Patterson. They were friends. I met and had conversations with Bishop Patterson through my pastor. Bishop Patterson invited me to preach. I never cashed in on it. I sat in his office. The first time I met him, he talked to me for like 30 minutes because him and my pastor were friends. And he, my pastor was the first person after Bishop Patterson that accepted the apostolic. So when everyone else started accepting the apostolic from Stacy Spencer, who was one of the largest, still top 10 churches in America, Apostle Stacy Spencer, he accepted the apostleship. Apostle A.R. Williams, he accepted the, the apostleship. You name them, apostle, apostle, apostle. Either they were apostles or they were Baptist preachers that were filled with the Spirit and grew some of the largest churches in Memphis. <laughs> and my pastor helped Bishop Jakes do the first Roman that I lose. It was in Memphis, Tennessee. When I had lunch with Bishop Jakes right here in Dallas, he still uh, has honor for my home church pastor. And he helped him do his first Roman that I lose. In Memphis, Tennessee, at the Best Western, and my, my biological mom was the administrator for that whole first conference. Ooh, wow. This is before Sarah Jakes. <laughs> this ain't a woman in a job. Evolve, this is the first woman that I lose. So I have deep history in the, in the, in the depths of the word. Wow. Bishop Mark Sharona was one of the prophets of our house. Prophet Kevin Leal. You get what I'm saying? Rich, rich heritage. So when I see people who are students of the word, whether they believe in the move of the spirit or not, I have value for them. I want to know, and I believe God wants to know, is that reciprocated? Are you that stubborn that you are that arrogant that you would say that every move of the spirit is wrong? That's a devil. I cannot say that I move flawlessly in the move of the Spirit. So how can you say you study flawlessly in the Word of God? Jesus said not one jot or tittle. You know how you know the Word of God? You have to be it. And if you're not the Word of God made flesh, you don't know it the way you think you do. So now you're God, huh? You see that dim? You see that devil? Oh, we hitting that devil in the chest. We hitting him in the chest tonight. So uh, let me go back to something I was saying. Um, the two have to come together. Did I miss something? Is there something I said I didn't finish? Huh? I'm missing something. It's something. It's something. So people are at each other's throats right now. And um, It's going to take a balance. <clears throat> it's going to take a balance. You know, I can see if they talk about me and other people 
especially some of the goofy stuff. But when you when you see like fathers like uh, Kenneth Hagen, Dad Hagen, people like that, and uh, they take that material and to mock it, and you just ignore the fruit that came out of some of those men and women of God, the fruit, the minds that were restored, the marriages that were healed the deliverances that took place, people who were suicidal, whose lives were headed to destruction and deliverance came into their life because of men like Kenneth Hagin and men like, and some people have dropped the ball. Some people did do dumb stuff with the move of the spirit. They did move in error. They did get off. I don't do everything correctly. But it's going to take a balance of both worlds. So after all that fussing preaching, I want to say, hey, I feel like I'm a cessationist friend. If you want to have a, see, if you so biblical that you become less adult, that's a devil. You mean, you, you mean to tell me we can't have a grown-up conversation, we can't talk civilized without attacking each other, that's a devil. We ain't got to agree on the same thing, but I find value in some of the truths that cessationists hold dear. I find value. I don't know about any other charismatic believer, but I wouldn't call myself charismatic. I wouldn't call myself Pentecostal. I mean, the first... Uh, Christians didn't even call themselves Christians. I just want to be like Jesus. Let's just keep it at that. Wherever you find me, whatever you want to categorize me, who do men say he is? <laughs> they couldn't categorize Jesus either. Hey, I don't know where other charismatics stand with that. And I tell you what, I've seen God and I've learned God and he's humbled me enough to say, you can run my name through the mud. I won't change my mind about what I've seen. Peter said, I'm an eyewitness of his majesty. I ain't changed my mind about what I've seen. And I'm not going to get offended because what's happening is those groups are fighting each other because of offenses. Offenses towards each other on the basis of what each other don't believe. So I want to say, hey, I would like to have some dialogue and I ain't even trying to be on, I ain't, I'm not going to come on your YouTube page. If you want my number and you a cessationist, you want to talk beyond uh, trying to create content around it. If you want to talk like grown people and share the word, you want to open the scriptures, then I'm open to that. Let's do that. And I'm sure I will learn something. I didn't follow the holy nope to spy on him. I saw his page. I'm like, he's kind of on to something. <laughs> and it seemed prophetic to me. And even though he may put something of me up there that he thinks look wacky, some of the stuff he put up there, it probably do look wacky to some people. I tell you what, our wacky at least make millionaires. <laughs> How many times you fall out? Come, come, come sit in the camera. Come on, fall out, people. Listen to all these people that look crazy when they fall out. They just, just, I want to show you the difference. If you ever see him fall out, check his bank account next, because he was broke before he fell out. I ain't saying supernatural money just going to appear. No, I'm saying, see, the blessing means to empower to prosper. It doesn't mean to drop miracle money. Why are you still looking over there? It doesn't mean to um, um, magically receive money. Y'all gonna have to come closer. He he can't keep the camera looking at y'all. Just come. Yeah, just come. Um, we got results. Now, I know some of that stuff look wacky, and I agree, and I agree with some of the approaches and some of the stuff you're saying. It's just bad. Some of the stuff we do is just dumb. 
And I probably can be a little flamboyant in the spirit at times. I can point my finger and do all this kind of stuff, wave my hand. You know, it's just fun sometimes. Amen. <laughs> hey. So, um, however, I can't say you cannot ignore the fruit. You can't ignore the fruit. From financial blessings to physical, but let me, let me rephrase that. From financial blessings that people had to work hard to achieve, but they were made possible when they worked hard because the blessing empowered them to prosper. That's the best way to say it. Because you can work hard until you blew it to face, and that don't mean you're about to get nothing. Your career is a gamble. <laughs> you're not guaranteed to success outside of biblical principles and the blessing of God. And I tell you what, speaking of that, Forbes don't think it's crazy. Here you are criticizing the move of the spirit, and I'm being interviewed in Forbes. I'm being interviewed in USA Today. I'm being set up to be in TEDx, set up to be at BNT, set up to, to be in Time Magazine, set up to be in Wall Street, already been an entrepreneur. What's crazier? Preaching to the, car, the choir and Christianese or actually moving in the spirit in a way that the world starts saying, oh, it's something about that. That's fruit. So you can like it or not. You're not taking any money out of my bank account that I work hard to get using biblical principles. You're not taking any hair out of my head. You're not taking the house from my family. When you get through, when you feel like you can detract and subtract people to nothing because you don't agree with them you might as well go be a little muslim go blow up a house or something when you want to attack people because they believe different from you in the name of we got to save the church from the the wolves no camellio had more sense than Acts chapter five he says listen you better leave them people alone because if god is with them you're gonna be you're fighting god but if god's not with them it's gonna come to nothing you can't stop fruit you can't fight fruit. So when you get through fighting, I'm just saying, but if you want to be normal, uh, uh, an adult citizen in a free country, <laughs> a little tyrant, then let's talk. Or you're a little terrorist. You're a little terrorist and you need to monetize your YouTube because you ain't got nothing else to do to make money. You're a little terrorist. And stop playing and stop acting like you're serving God. You're, you're fishing for attention. Amen. But I'm open to talking to anyone that's adult-like. <laughs> we got to fight each other. Let me see. I want to see what you think. I may learn something. I may say, hey, sometimes I need to make sure I don't speak in tongues without interpreting right here. I may say that. I'm not above God. It's amazing how people take God's book and set their understanding of what he wrote above God himself. Wow. I met him. Now, I know you don't think that's real because you have idolized Christian characters from the Bible. I met Jesus. Believe it or not. So there are resources there if you want to hear more about that. If the Holy Ghost has seized your heart, if the Holy Ghost has divinely arrested you, if you don't know why your heart is burning, if you don't know why you feel pulled to this, I have resources. I have ways you can connect and connect with our ministry, our church that I don't live off of because I do business and I became a millionaire before I opened the church. You can connect to the church. You can do all kinds of books and resources. And um, Hey, and if any other cessation is out there that you want to really talk or, or you're open to, to learning, if you think you know already, you're a fool. But if you're open to learning like I am, like any regular adult, then I would love to talk and I would love to learn from you, sensationists, if you're able 
to have an emotionally intelligent conversation without attacking and fighting and biting at each other. And off record, it's not for selfies and, uh, and content. It's not for YouTube and Instagram. Let's talk, because I like what a lot of you are saying that I've been hearing lately. And uh, I don't think it has to conflict, because Jesus taught that the scripture and the power of God complement. And without both of them, you're in error. So if I'm in error with the way I move in the spirit because I lack understanding in the scripture in the error, I want to correct it. You get what I'm saying? However, God does choose the foolish things to confound the wise. And um, that's just where I stand. Cessationists. That's powerful. That, that was a smack down to hell. Not a smack of cessation. As I know I threw it out there, but I'm telling you, that's, that's just real talk. That's just maturity. If you don't want that, you fake. You're, you're definitely fake. Like what somebody believe. You got Muslims live two streets down from you. Like you're going to be infected with some type of <laughs> demonic disease because someone believes different than you. You had a Hindu that, that checked you out at the grocery store. You probably had a witch or a Wiccan deliver your Amazon package. And you got other Christians that... Rub off some type of unbelieving disease on you because they think different than you? That's a devil. It's a spirit and a devil, demon of division. Amen. I think, how long is this? I want to run this one live and I want to be in the chat commenting. I don't want to put this out. Good. I don't want to just, I don't want to cut this up. I want to put it together. And I want to run it live. And I'm going to be, I'm in the comments uh, chatting. And I'll do an intro. Okay. Um, yeah. All right. Love you guys. Tag Holy Note. I want to meet him. I want to talk the word with him. He knows some Bible. But Bible knowledge is not God knowledge. Now, I know he said, but see, there he goes. <laughs> okay, Bible knowledge is God knowledge. But it's not too. You can know the scripture and not know God. Okay. However, let me say this point. My objective is not to be right. That's what makes the devil nervous. I'm not trying to be right. I'm not trying to win an argument. I can feel the heart of God throbbing behind this. The objective, is, the, object, the objective is not who's right or wrong. The objective is how can we come together in the presence of God? Not just come together, unity of the faith. No, no, no. The Bible says the unity of faith is in the bond of the spirit. It takes the spirit to bring unity. So if you want to really connect with people, you got to be both for you. Both parties have to be willing to come into the presence together. Because my Bible says you get a group of people that come in the presence together. God will speak to all of them at the same time. The same thing. That's what happened in Acts chapter 13. You want to join together? Okay, we got to come to the presence. You don't want the presence? All right, then I can't help you. I guess you're just going to agree to disagree. But I ain't got to hate you because you disagree. I don't have to attack you because you disagree. Attack your way. You ain't got to repent. I'm just saying, when you get done, you're probably going to send some people my way. I had a person, um, you know, I, I used to do this uh, gloriology class. And um, I had a gossip column, LRL. They put out one of my services because it looked, it looked bad on, on camera what happened. And I'm glad I released a full version of it. You know, some guys that were coming in and they was, you know, then they walked out and then people was like, what if they're not saved? But they had on their 
black Hebrew um, shirts on and everything. They were not there to be saved or they were there to protest the service. And the Holy Ghost showed me that before I had knowledge of it. And I called him out. Only thing I did that I should not have done, I tried to lay hands on him. And I did that because I saw someone else do it. So he moved my hand off his head and everyone thought it was a big deal. And he was like, well, he should have, if he would have did different, they would have been saved. No, no, no. They came with their, they came to evangelize us. And the full version of the video proved it. But, the, you know, it was on LRL and he was trying to throw my name under the mud. And because of that, he sent people my way and I had the biggest class that I ever had. <laughs> teaching people about the glory. So you can fight me all you want. It's probably going to send people that really want it. <laughs> Your best bet is to keep quiet. Just act like I don't exist because I'm going to find a way. Even if I'm learning from you, I'm going to find a way. I'm humble enough to say I don't know everything, and I probably am going to learn something from you. But let's see. Let's see what God does. Amen? Amen. All right. That's it. I'm going to be in the chat live. Well, I've been in the chat. That was me texting back uh, in the chat. Share this with other people. Um, I am interacting as me in the comments. Um, this is good. What can we call this? Just maybe call it, does God still move? Because when you think about it, no one outside of the church world even know what cessation is me. We just had to look it up. So I'm, when, I don't, I'm not talking to just Christian people. I'm talking to people who are hungry and want something. So I'm, I, this, somebody may be watching me now that looked in Forbes or looked in entrepreneur.com or looked in USA Today or looked and saw me in church or in IG or, you know, so I'm going to make it plain. Um, and just in case, did we record the part about the um, the definition of cessation? Did, did we look it up? Okay, cool. So I'll do an intro. We can stop it here. Connect. Make sure you sign up to my um, subscribe to the YouTube channel. Sign up for the mailing list. This um, is I offer things to help people study the move of the Spirit in the Bible. Um, I have a lot, a lot of resources out there. I help people become millionaires. I've helped multiple people become millionaires. I do business. I've helped a lot of people become high six figure earners. So I have a lot of offers. I have a lot of things, resources that can help you connect. Make sure you connect, at least subscribe to the YouTube channel, share this with other people. I'm sure they heard things and you heard things, or I'm sure they will hear things and you heard things that, uh, you probably overlooked in scripture. Um, and I hope it bless you. Love you guys. Talk to you soon.